Hello, and welcome to worship at the Treble United Methodist Church, though that's not where I am today. Um, this is December 6th, 2020. And before we get started today, let's take a moment for the Advent candle lighting. Last week was the very beginning of Advent. The message was of hope, remembering the hope born to us in Bethlehem. This week, we light the second candle, the candle of peace. God brings us peace as we personally and collectively open our lives to the Prince of Peace, Jesus the Christ, our Messiah, our King. May his legacy of peace become our legacy also. Did you know that the king cobra is the longest venomous snake on the planet? They are about 13 feet long and I measured out, out in my living room and my living room isn't big enough so it would actually stretch into the kitchen. My husband who really doesn't like snakes found that last little bit tidbit very fascinating. You know, king penguins reach 40 inches tall and they're 40 pounds. King salmon are the biggest Pacific salmon. I've known at least three Great Danes named King, and we all know who the King of the Jungle is. Now I'm standing here outside of the Castle Rock Museum here in Alma, and the knight that was pictured at the beginning of this uh, video, um, he, he would have had a king. He would have um, had to defend that king by any possibly violent means necessary. This was, in many ways, a kingdom of conquest and cruelty and capture. Apparently the word king means biggest, scariest, meanest, strongest. Except that isn't always true, is it? Hear these words from the Gospel of Luke. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great, and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. He will be great, Mary. God will give him a, a throne. He will reign. He will have his own kingdom. A king born to you, Mary. God chose you. What do you think about that? And Matthew starts his Christmas story with these words. Now the birth of Jesus the Messiah took place in this way. The word Messiah aligns with the Hebrew word Meshayak. It means anointed one. It refers to the practice of pouring or smearing anointing oil onto a sacred object or person. And, and then there, it is therefore set aside for God's purposes. Now the early reference to this is in the very beginning of the Bible in Exodus where Moses um, is told by God to anoint the sanctuary and all of the all of the holy objects with anointing oil to set them aside for God's purposes. And the kings of Judah, of course, were always anointed, especially we remember the most famous of them, David. God promised that a descendant of David would rule over God's people forever. Anointed one became synonymous with king. Now, Adam Hamilton tells a story of Britain's, uh, when Britain's Queen England was uh, crowned on June 2nd, 1953. And it was filmed for all to see, except for the part where she was anointed with the holy oil. At that point, a canopy was brought in and put over the queen so that no one could see. And the Archbishop of Canterbury anointed her forehead and her upper chest and her hands with this holy oil and therefore set aside her head and her heart and her hands for God's purposes. When I have had the privilege of being present with someone who is in the process of dying, I bring my anointing oil. Or when I arrive, I ask for some sort of 
household oil. And then I make the sign of the cross on his or her forehead. I want them to remember that they are set aside for God, for God's purposes. They are consecrated, that they've been called by God and are even and probably most especially at this sacred time answering that call. They are responding to that call. That Jesus, who is the King, their Messiah at the time of their death, will be there to lead them home. Now when Mary heard those wild words from the, from the angel Gabriel, she was hearing an old promise from God regarding the lineage of David. Time's up, Mary. It's been a thousand years that your people have been waiting for the Messiah and God chose you. It's amazing. Now Matthew and Luke want us to know at the very beginning that this child whose story they are telling is the long-awaited Messiah, is the King, the Anointed One. But when Jesus is born and grows up, his people know a different kind of a king. They know Herod, King Herod, who is cruel and power-hungry and evil and dishonest and violent. And some people think that they will have to fight fire with fire that their Messiah, whomever that is, is going to have to be stronger and more cruel and scarier and more violent than the Rome appointed kings like King Herod. But that isn't what they got. The kingdom of God, the kingdom that God was building by bringing flesh that would walk among them, that walk among the people, was a kingdom where people treated one another how they would want to be treated. It was a place where a man beaten and dying and left to die along the side of the road would be rescued by a Samaritan stranger. The kingdom that God was building through Jesus relied on its citizens loving God with all of their hearts rather than adoring their own power and their own glory. It was a place where God's will be done on earth as it is in heaven. God once told his disciples that the kingdom of God was among them. In other words, the foundation was there, but they were going to have to keep building. They would need to keep the streets clean and the doors wide open. Now, it's interesting to me that we very often read the story of Angel and, and uh, the angel Gabriel and Mary a few weeks after an election where there is much jostling for power. Now we don't know who will win that election. Sometimes we don't know for weeks, and that's happened a couple of times now. But we do know one thing. We know who the king is. We know that long before we were born, this king gazed into our eyes with love and anticipation. We know that throughout our lives, this king picks us up and wipes away our tears and opens doors for us and closes some others. We know that this king not only leads us out, but delivers us into a kingdom where injustice and rejection and fear and pain don't exist. I know your king. Your king is kind. Your king is just. Your king cares deeply for you and for your family and for your friends. Your king is merciful. Your king is holy. Your king is powerful. Your king is compassionate. Your king longs for peace. Your king is selfless. Your king hears your prayers and responds. Your king never abandons or forgets you. Your King is Jesus the Christ, the Messiah.
And now will you say the Lord's Prayer with me? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now may you go in peace, knowing that your king goes with you. May you go knowing that Jesus Christ loves and leads you. Go with the peace of the Holy Spirit in your heart. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you.